What's up, everybody? Uh, it's your boy, Mel on Mars. Um, everybody say it's your boy, huh? Maybe I should find something different. <laughs> uh, but it's Mel on Mars. Here today to do the S in Mars, which is spirituality. And uh, I just think this is an opportunity for me to express some of the things that God gives me uh, during my study time. I, um, I'm a very spiritual, spiritual guy that uh, has a relationship with Christ. I, I'm not perfect by no means, but I do my best to whatever imperfections I have, I give it to him and I try to get back on top whenever a sin occurs. Uh, but, and I, I encourage you all to do the same and, you know, whatever uh, God has for you, just go for it. You know, don't let anything ever get you down. Uh, but this particular video, uh, with, like many of my videos will be, is going to be a little bit off kilter and something that you may have not ever heard or maybe not heard it put this way uh, but the title says stop snitching and that's exactly what we're going to talk about this video is for either people who have been snitched on or you're thinking about snitching on someone or you have snitched and now you see the ramifications that has happened you know this video is for you uh, and this video is for me uh, because I think we all can fit one of those categories and and I think from situations I've been through I've realized that snitching when someone snitches they're really not doing it no matter what they say <laughs> they're really not doing it to help the situation or help the people involved with it you know most times they say I just want to do the right thing I want to do What's right? I want. I mean, I'm just tired of people hurting. I'm tired. Of, no, the most time they're doing it for themselves. Majority of the time, I mean, they're doing it either to get some kind of comp compensation out of it, uh, to clear their name. Uh, they may have received a certain punishment, and are not. It's not fair that I receive that punishment, and this person is not receiving that punishment. They have themselves in mind, whether it's consciously or, you know, subconsciously, maybe not, not knowingly, you know, they're doing it for themselves. And, uh, and there's no bigger example of that that I can think of uh, other than Judas in the Bible. I mean, we're just coming off Easter um, and, you know, I call it Resur Resurrection Sunday, uh, celebrating the resurrection of Christ. And... Well, led up to that, of course, if you know, if you're seeing this, hopefully you know the story. If not, look it up. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> uh, just the whole story of Christ and and the, the uh, leading up to his death, he predicted it all, you know, and it went exactly how he said it would. And one of the things he said to his disciples at the Last Supper is that one of you all will betray me, and and of course we know that end up being Judas. But one thing I can say is. Um, Judas was part of the plan. We all know that spiritually, looking at this spiritually, God had a plan. He used that plan and, and, and brought his son to, to, to earth to live perfectly, die sacrificially, and, and rise again with all power in his hand. And with that being said, Judas had a plan. But let's try not to look at this for now, I try not to look at this so spiritually and look at it naturally. Naturally, Judas was a snitch. Judas was a snitch that uh, betrayed the man who had, you know, been had saved him, took him from whatever he was doing at that time, and given him this this life where he can, you know, live more abundantly and live, you know, live free. And uh, so Christ predicted that. He said it's going to happen. But why did Judas snitch? He didn't snitch because he felt like the Pharisees was right, and you know I need to make this make this right. You know by God that the Pharisees are doing the right thing, and I've been living a lie this whole time. I need to do this right thing now. I need to make it right. No, he didn't do it for no other reason than for those thirty pieces of silver. He did it for himself. He did it to help himself to get his own gain. So that's what I'm talking about. You're doing it for your own personal gain. And then you think about it. What did that lead to? Just naturally speaking. We know, thank God that Jesus died on the cross. Thank God he died for my sins. And now 
I can live and not have to sacrifice a lamb every time. And <laughs> I, I have true freedom in Christ, in God, based on what Jesus did. But putting that to the side, just for a moment, he caused someone's death based on him snitching. Did he know it would lead to that? I'm sure he did not, as most snitches don't. But he caused someone's death. He made Mary lose her son. He made the other 11 disciples lose their leader, lose their rabbi. Just based on him wanting to get the 30 pieces of silver and release it. You know, this is a subject that is close to me because I am a victim of a snitch. I'm a victim of someone who handled the situation incorrectly and it did cause me to lose a few things in my life. But I'm not here to just bash anyone or just say, you know, everyone is wrong <laughs> for snitching. I don't feel like it's the right thing to do. I'm not saying it just based on my opinion. I'm saying that based on the word of God. So let me just take away my opinion and put a little scripture on it, if that's okay. <laughs> so the Bible clearly tells us how to confront someone. If you look at Matthew 18, verses 15 through 20, I'm just going to read 15 and 17 from the message version. Uh, it says, if a fellow believer hurts you, go and tell him. Work it out between the two of you. If he listens, you've made a friend. And if he won't listen, take two or I'm sorry, take one or two others along so that the presence of witnesses will, will keep things honest and try again. If he still won't listen, tell the church. If he won't listen to the church, you have to start over from scratch. Confront him with the need for repentance and offer against God's forgiving love. Now, you guys tell me, does that sound anything like 2017 in America? Do you see anyone doing that these days? Do you see anyone taking uh, just a simple, take a simple moment to step back and say, let me go address this with my brother. Let me go address this with my sister. You, your mindset may not be right right now, my brother. You approached me this way. You did this certain thing to me. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Let's work this out between each other. I apologize. I mean, I apologize for anything I did to offend you. You know, I would like an apology, you know, for me. But if you don't, it's fine. But I just want to let you know that this is in incorrect. This doesn't live up to the standard of Christ. It doesn't live up to the standard of the Bible. However you want to word it. Do anyone do that these days? No. Most of the time, we go straight to somebody else. Hey. Hey, bro, did you see what so-and-so did to me? Oh, man, I can't believe she did that to you, girl. I can't believe... You know, that's how we handle things now. We tell everybody else around the situation first. And then, if get to that person, then they realize, oh, they've been talking behind my back this whole time. Okay, now we're going to fist the cuffs. Or now we on Twitter. Now we on Instagram or Facebook or whatever you on. We go, we go to that beef. Until, I mean... I ain't talking about these teenagers. I ain't talking about no kids. I'm talking about grown 40, 50 year old people doing this. You know, and most of these people call themselves Christians. Most of the people call themselves believers. But if you call it, confess to be a believer, that is the way we should handle things. You go to someone initially. Now, I'm, I'm guilty of this before as well. I'm not putting, us, putting myself out there as someone that's uplifted and never made this mistake. But if we have an art against someone, we go to them first with love, with the same love that Christ has given us, the same forgiveness that Christ has forgiven us of. We go to them. That doesn't work. We take a, someone that we can trust, not nobody who's going to edge us on. Girl, you need to tell, uh-uh. I'm going to let him talk, uh-uh. I will not let him talk to me like that. Tell him off. You know, you don't need that person. You need somebody who's going to keep you calm, keep you collected, know the same scripture that you know. So we can go handle this thing like we need to be handled. If that doesn't work, then you take it to the church. Then you take it amongst a mass of people that can truly get this brother, get this sister right on the right page so we can, you know, move on. Obviously, this is somebody who's important to you, maybe important to your, your job, important to what you, what you do. 
your family or whatever the case may be because if they were not important to you, you wouldn't take the time of day to even talk to them. So that's the way the Bible tells us to handle things. And when we get that, then we can finally get to the true peace that we're looking for. That's where you can truly help somebody without losing them. That's, why you, that's when you can truly help somebody without causing a rift in their family. You know, I watched a show called The Carmichael Show. If I encourage anyone else to watch it. It's a, it's a cool show. They do a lot of uh, uh, t uh, nice topics, current events and stuff like that. But it's very funny. And uh, one of the episodes, the mother, she just... She had the, she had information on one of her friends' uh, husbands, and uh, the the the, uh, the lead guy in the show, his girlfriend. She always wants to do the right thing. She always think what she what she, the way she thinks is the right thing to do. So she encouraged his mom, her boyfriend's mom, to call her best friend, and tell her everything she knows. The best friend automatically hung up in her face, saying, "You hating on me," you know, and. <laughs> And honestly, I wish most people would react like that, because the point is, mind your business. It's not it's not none of your business. Mind your business, because at the end of the day, the truth always is revealed. It don't have to be revealed through you. I don't want to be responsible for someone's divorce, although I did not commit the act, or I didn't do what's wrong was leading them to that. I don't want to be responsible for somebody being fired from the job or divorce or, or you know, <laughs> someone else getting so angry they go fight somebody or, you know, I don't want to be responsible for a life-changing event in somebody's life when I could have easily went to them and said, hey, man, you're wrong for that. You know, hey, man, I love you. Can you find a better way to do this? You know, you don't know the ramifications you can have with someone with, with just one snitch. And... Taking it to the streets, we all know. They say snitches get stitches. And most of the time, we know our, our favorite show out there, the first 48, it don't take nothing for them dudes to snitch. We go, before the commercial break, we, I ain't saying nothing. You know, it's my dude. I, ain't, I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. You know, y'all didn't let me go. Come out the commercial break. Alright, now ain't look nothing up. Live on 4th Street. Y'all didn't let me go. Then, but they don't do a follow up and know that nothing nut nut got out. And went over to pay a visit to the snitch. But, <laughs> so let's, let's just keep in mind these things when, before we release things. And, man, just consult the word of God, man. Because I realize in my life the biggest mistakes that I've made has been through things that I just. If I would have picked up the word of God. And if you're not versed in the Bible, man, you can do a quick Google search. What does the Bible say about this? And then it's the app. I mean, the uh, the uh, website I like the most is called openbible.com, I believe. And it give you different uh, verses and, and scriptures that about that particular uh, category. Uh, so I appreciate you guys for watching this. Uh, if you agree, disagree, cool, just leave a comment if you would like. Or you can definitely hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, because I'm definitely going to try to do some content and uh, just get my different unique perspective, or I think it's unique, perspective on uh, different topics. And I, I try to be off the wall and, and say things that most people don't, that you don't hear in, in most churches. So I appreciate you guys for listening. I hope you have a blessed night and peace.